Good morning. おはようございます。If you were here a month ago, you might remember that we talked about chanting. I was making the point that as Shin Buddhists, chanting is our meditation. To further make this point, I looked into the book Peace is, Peace is Every Step by well known Buddhist monk, peace activist Thich Nhat Hanh. He speaks of meditation in very simple form and shares the many benefits of practice. Please listen to this quote Every morning when we wake up, we have 24. Brand new hours to live. What a precious gift. We have the capacity to live in a way that these 24 hours will bring peace, joy, and happiness to ourselves and to others. With these words, he begins his book, reminding us of the potential that we each have. Every morning, we can unfold peace, joy, happiness, both for ourselves and to be shared with the people around us. Through his book, he shares techniques of simple breathing, mindful awareness, and appreciation. These extend through each individual to have an impact on our personal health and on how we view and deal with things, war, the environment, and every issue in life. But before we talk about meditation, chanting, and Thich Nhat Hanh, I have a Thanksgiving story. For the younger ones. Any younger ones here today? Can you raise your hands? Okay, now I know where you are. Okay. This is a story about an old barn kitty and a turkey. True story. When I lived in Oregon, my wife Charmin's uncle had an old barn kitty. Charmin used to drive this 40 mile loop to help one uncle, then another uncle. And then her parents, and then another uncle. Every day she'd drive this loop to check in on everyone, make sure everything's okay, feed their animals, whatever needed to be done. When her first uncle died, she still had to drive to his house to feed the old barn kitty, Rocky. She would hit the can of cat food with a spoon, call Rocky. Rocky! Finally, Rocky would come out of the fields to eat. We'd put the food in her shed. Sometimes this would be nine or ten o'clock at night. There'd be a cat house with a light bulb to keep her warm from the freezing weather out in the shed. One night, when we were feeding Rocky, we heard a heavy flutter of feathers. And a young wild turkey lands in the rafters of the shed.、Okay. Turkeys are big. Young turkeys, twice the size of the cat, Rocky. He looks down on us as Rocky gets fed. He would come every night as we fed Rocky. Finally, we start talking to him. We name him Bullwinkle.、Okay. And we would expect to see. Rocky and Bullwinkle every day. They became friends. Sometimes we would come during the day, and Rocky and Bullwinkle would be sitting on the porch together or walking across the lawn together. What an odd couple. An old barn kitty and a young wild turkey keeping each other company. And so we would see this every day that we went there. The story tells us if we are respectful, humble, and kind, others will like us and we'll make good friends. Thursday, you can think of Rocky and Bullwinkle. Okay. Thich Nhat Hanh was born in 1926, and his words of simple peace and practice take on a great depth. When we know that he lived surrounded by the pains and the horrors of the wars in Vietnam. In the foreword to his book, the Dalai Lama wrote Although attempting to bring about world peace through the internal transformation of individuals, it's difficult, but it's the only way. 
Wherever I go, I express this, and I am encouraged that people from many different walks of life receive it well. Peace must first be developed within an individual. And I believe that love, compassion, and altruism are the fundamental basis for peace. Once these qualities are developed within an individual, he or she is then able to create an atmosphere of peace and harmony. This atmosphere can be expanded and extended from the individual to his family, from the family to the community, and eventually to the world. Thich Nhat Hanh was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize by Dr. Martin Luther King. The book is a reminder that happiness is possible only in the present moment. So last month, I was pointing out that pretty much every school of Buddhism utilizes some form of meditation in their practice. Other types of Buddhism look at Arshin Buddhism as strange that we don't do meditation here. To me, chanting is our meditation. Because we are engaged in this communal activity, chanting together, our mindfulness is expanded beyond our internal awareness to include everyone else in the room. Chanting allows us to explore the connected reality of self and others. Last month I said that I try to tell people that instead of explaining what oneness is about, you can feel it and sense it and know it through chanting. We're able to recognize our voice of ego self while also experiencing our voice of shared connection. We don't choose one over the other, but recognize that there are both. Through this, our lives become deeper. We're able to observe the interplay of the usual voice that we recognize. I recognize as me, the voice I hear every morning soon as I wake up, and the voice that is connected with others. Understanding is not enough. Participation is the key. This is why I explain, explanation is empty. It's the chanting and doing it together that becomes essential. I was demonstrating that even though we're chanting with proper posture without tension and the sound coming from the center of our being, our cal calculating mind still sneaks out to peek at our neighbors, to plan for lunch, schedule errands, play out scenarios, and envision almost anything hidden in our minds at the moment. Often we talk about the normal world and the natural world. The normal world is the realm of samsara, the world we recognize and think that we know as everyday life. The natural world is the realm of nirvana that we fail to recognize or cannot see because we're so wrapped up in ourselves and what we see and think is normal. Two worlds simultaneously coexisting, the normal and the natural worlds. We don't choose one over the other. We don't choose enlightened life over everyday life. We come to see both. In my demonstration of chanting, I was showing that while we're supposed to be chanting, our minds wander off thinking about all sorts of things. If we were overlooking the room during our chanting, we would see that each of us sitting still, still and present, breathing deeply. What other times of the day are we breathing so deeply, so regularly? Ga gon cho se gon Hi shi mu jo do Shi gan fu man zok Se fu jo sho gak We go to the doctor, he tells us stethoscope on our back, take a deep breath and usually our, deeping it, our breathing is shallow. We need to reach deeper, reach deeper. He allows us time to relax so we have a deeper breath. This is all happening as we chant. In our action, in our posture, 
We are respecting ourselves and each other. It's not that this is what is supposed to be happening. It happens each time we chant. Through the chanting, we are grounded, connected, present, aware of both self and others. At the same time, our minds continue calculating, conniving, planning, wondering what we can do next. We identify with the mind and think, I wasn't paying attention to the chanting. But both were happening. Nirvana and samsara were both here. The normal world and the natural world were both here. We can recognize the grounding presence that arises from the practice of chanting. And at the same time, we can recognize the playful activity of the mind. We identify with the wandering mind, so we dismiss the value of the chanting and the validity of the practice. But when we can point out that the wandering mind is just the activity of the ego, then we can level the playing field. We're able to see both. Seeing both means to elevate the chanting as practice and dismissing the ego as the star of the show. In his section on conscious breathing, Thich Nhat Hanh writes, there are a number of breathing techniques you can use to make life vivid and more enjoyable. The first exercise is very simple. As you breathe in, you say to yourself, breathe in. I know that I am breathing in. As you breathe out, say breathing out, I know that I am breathing out. Just recognize your in-breath as an in-breath and your out-breath as your out-breath. You don't even need to recite the whole sentence, just two words, in, out. This technique can help you keep your mind on your breath. As you practice, your breath will become peaceful and gentle. Your mind and body will also become peaceful and gentle. This is not a difficult exercise. In just a few minutes, you can realize the fruit of meditation. The same thing is happening as we chant every week when we come here. Breathing in and out is very important and it's enjoyable. How many of us prefer one over the other? Those of us who prefer breathing in, just breathe in only. can't be done, right? Our breathing is the link between our body and our minds. Sometimes our mind is thinking of one thing and our body is doing another. Mind and body are not unified. Does this sound familiar? We feel this every time we chant. Our mouth is chanting. Our mind's doing something else entirely. By concentrating on our breathing, in and out, we bring body and mind back together become whole again. Conscious breathing is an important bridge. Thich Nhat Hanh continues, there are so many exercises we can do to help us breathe consciously. Besides the simple in-out exercise, we can recite four lines as we breathe in and out. Breathe in, I calm my body. Breathe out, I smile. Dwelling in the present moment, I know this is a wonderful moment. Breathing in, I calm my body. Reciting this line, like drinking a glass of cool lemonade on a hot day, you can feel the coolness permeate your body. I breathe in and recite this line. I actual, actually feel my breath calming my body and my mind. Breathing out, I smile. You know a smile can relax hundreds of muscles in your face. Wearing a smile on your face is a sign that you are master of yourself. Dwelling in the present moment, while I sit here, I don't think of anything else. I sit here and I know exactly where I am. I know this is a wonderful moment. It is a joy to sit stable and at ease and return to our breathing, 
our smiling, our true nature. This exercise is not just for beginners. Many of us who have practiced meditation and conscious breathing for 40 or 50 years continue to practice in the same way because this kind of exercise is so important and so easy. Again, everything he's saying about meditation, we do here as we chant. We don't recognize it. We diminish it because we think what we're thinking is more important than this, what we're doing. Chanting is mindful purity. Chanting is an art, a beautiful meditative art. Don't miss it. Don't dismiss it. Recognize this before we die. Enjoy and appreciate all the aspects of our wonderful tradition of chanting. Please join me in Gassho. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namanda, 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 Namanda. Thank you.